We're getting up close and personal with all your favorite celebrities on the hottest weekend party show in the city, The Abbey Night Show. What's up, y'all? You're listening to all the hits on the number one party show in the city, The Abbey Night Show. Tell a friend. And we're back, everybody, with special guest Jeremy Mincy. How you doing today? I am doing great, man. I'm just blessed. Glad to be here. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. Right? <laughs> you excited for the new year? Oh, yeah. Big time. Anyway, I'm so excited to be chatting with you. I know you're from Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm trying to understand your your journey. It's like, I feel like you do a million things. Super talented. Um, I can't even imagine what it's got to be like spending a day in your brain. But <laughs> how did you kind of get from sports to television to music? Was the dream initially to be an artist and then you ended up succeeding in sports? Yeah, that's pretty much what it was. I mean, uh, okay. I started out doing music, recording records with... Uh, with my cousin Ricky and um and I was back when I was, you know, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Um and I tried out for football um my junior year and didn't look back. You know, it really started out with basketball. Uh I wasn't in um I wasn't on the team in ninth grade, so you could scratch that. I was just a trouble kid who uh made a bet with my cousin to play football and you know, everything else kinda lined up. Yeah, it lined up pretty well. Nine years in the NFL, playing for teams like the Jaguars, the Broncos, the Cowboys. That that bet played out pretty well for you, didn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to have my bets have those kinds of results. Uh, so as a kid, did you ever see yourself doing something outside of entertainment? You know, like when you have those school projects where it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Were you wanting to be like a fireman or a doctor or something? I mean, you know, I was I really wanted to go to the NBA. You know, that was like a a dream of mine. And um, football just, you know, just fell in line. But within the midst of that, I was actually always recording music. And uh, being a recording artist was uh, critical as well, you know, um, like I said, I've been writing music since I was a kid, and uh, it was just something I loved to do. And everywhere I went, I ran into different uh, musicians. Even in college, like you know, uh, a roommate of mine was a platinum selling artist. So you know, I was just, you know, I was always just drawn to talent, um, and talent was drawn to me. So I just you know wanted to create. That's a cool situation to be in to have that kind of a roommate, especially as a creative. It's a natural space, natural environment to be in, right? Absolutely. I mean, great, great times, man. I would leave the football field and we would run right to the studio, <laughs> you know, and just create, create. It made college what it was, you know. That sounds so cool. I started out as an artist, so I totally get it. I feel like your first passion always kind of lingers, regardless of what you do in life. Right. So you did sports. You got out of sports. You started mm -hmm. kind of dabbling into music a little bit. I mean, Let's talk a little bit about some of these placements you've had. So I yeah. like I love the fact that your resume, you like some people are like, oh, well, I did this and I was kind of good at that. And then I kind of transitioned into this. It's like, no, you went from one thing, did great at it, went into another, did amazing at that, then went into mm. another thing and then totally knocked it out the park. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the music and some of those placements you've had. Oh, well, so uh, with the music, like I was telling you, my roommate was a, uh, a platinum selling artist and you know uh he kind of inspired me to uh you know since he was a great artist uh, at the time you know i was thinking more on the business side started you know learning how to get llc's and copyright things and figure <laughs> right. out how the business of the game work and then i started you know growing back into the uh artistry and i love like i actually uh did a european tour in 2013 as an artist um mm -hmm. but i was uh but in hindsight i was promoting my uh, company and, um, mm -hmm. and you know, just a movement of it. So I had different acts opening for me and things like that. So I was just branding and expanding all at once. And uh, when I opened the studio uh, in Jacksonville, it kind of sparked this culture of music. 
And I'm just glad to, you know, be a part of all that. And um, I actually had a studio down in Houston, Texas, when I was playing for the Cowboys that uh, was ran and operated by uh, OG Ron C from Swisher House and all those guys and uh, T Nitty. Um, and that's what Megan recorded, Big Old Freak, one of her big hits at and stuff. Like, I, you know, I just had my hands in a lot of everything. And uh, after, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, <laughs> I'm just laughing because you're like, you know, just casually just throwing out names, you know, Meg the Stallion, she she dropped a record in there too, you know, and then so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because so many people aspire to do great things. Everybody has dreams. But it's not often that you see people get to actually live out and accomplish multiple dreams and be successful, you know? That's true. It's, it's just about just about passion, you know, and just you know, believing in, you know, once you feel like you conquered it, move on to the next. You can always be better. And, you know, it's the gift and the curse to that mindset because it's yeah. hard to be content at times. But, you know, you know, we only got a certain amount of time on this, um, earth and might as well maximize it the best way you can. So, you know, we pass one day. You could say he was this, he was this, he was that, he was that. And that inspired your offspring for generations to come. So I think that's what really drives me. And I, I do hear that your kids are pretty athletic as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you see them kind of going down the same path as you with football? Or do you think that they're going to kind of have their own course? I think, I think you know, I'm, I just let them choose what they love. Like, I let them, you know, I give them things to do. And hopefully they fall in love with them. You know, like, my daughter has three, like, really dope singles out. She did all those by the time she was seven. And, um, what? Yes, now she is like now uh we did a lot of philanthropy work. Uh, -huh. uh she's been on the news for donating to uh, uh homeless, uh, you know, just a lot of different things and um uh, I try to focus on it, you know, the most positive things that can help others. Um just by leading by example and uh, that's what I do for my children. So I think they, I think they love they think that I love sports more than them, but I, I think they love it more than I ever did because they thought that I was that much in love with it. And um, and that's why I continue to, you know, uh, push them through that. And I mean, if that's what they love, I let them do it, you know? That's beautiful. I love that you're instilling giving back and paying paying it forward at such a young age. That's, in my opinion, kindness is so important and so necessary. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a lot of people don't talk about it as much as they should, but it's a big part of humanity and what establishes that foundation. So that's really, really cool. Um, I, I, so I'm trying to wrap my head around all this stuff. So you go from sports, get into the music. It's dope that your kids are in into sports as well. Cause I have no doubt that they're going to succeed doing anything they set their mind to with a father like you. Um, you also have a film that you've recently released, 13th and mm -hmm. Pine, that is available mm -hmm. on Tubi. Uh, so from what I know, this film is about a fatherless basketball star in a impoverished Atlanta area, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it, it I, I think the distributor put Atlanta on it, you know, just to make it more. But it's it's, uh, it's out of South Georgia, uh, Statesboro, Georgia. Okay. It, and I was just telling the story of, you know, a Southern Georgia, a Georgian, you know, because... Our cultures are the same, but yeah, it's it's a little different, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta, Atlanta has more access to you know ways to create a lane for yourself, uh, but uh, Statesboro don't have those type of opportunities. So a lot of those kids do lead to you know crime and putting themselves in bad situations because they don't have many options. So that's what I was really trying to illustrate in that film. I love it. And for everybody that's listening in right now. We have the trailer for you. Check it out. You got to make a choice, man. You got to either choose street or ball. You can't have both. Don't I know you from somewhere? Nah, you don't know me from nowhere, bro. You sure? Yeah, bro, you don't know me. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. That's my son. I'll deal with him. We just had the same place all the low life gone. I know you know that, though. Man, we could all make it up out of here at college, but you got the best shot, dog. So what's up, L? You in or what? Yeah, I'm in. Sometimes the closest influences can be
be your downfall. It's gonna get rich this year. Appreciate you, Big C. You must be one of the Pine Street boys. I recognize boys like you. Y'all two wasn't involved with no murder land back, was you? I had my good shit deeds, and I had my bad shit deeds. Shoot his ass two more times, man. Catch this ass! Goddamn heathen, baby bandit! Your mama? You all she got. What you doing? Whatever. This my mother sick. And the more pressure you gonna get to him. I should expel this boy right away. Some said growing up where I'm from, you can't make it. Everything is everything, it's beautiful. One, two, three, go! Nobody! Get your ass out behind, you're gonna get your ass killed out there. Well, I'm destined to prove that was a lie. So what you think about it? We can't wait to have him play with us. That's a great <laughs> way to to end that. So what you think about that? <laughs> 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 that was so intense. I can't wait to watch it. It looks incredible. So what was the shooting process like? How long did it take you guys to shoot this movie? Well, um, it took me it took me two weeks. Honestly, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks. Wow. Who wrote the yeah. script? It's really well written, too. <laughs> I wrote it. I wrote you the did? script. Yes, ma'am. I wrote it. Um, I directed it, and uh, I helped co-edit with my one of my editors. So, you know, it was, t it was a tough uh, doing the creative process, but it was so worth it. Like, when, when, when I finished the literature, I was like, I got to shoot this, you know, so... I, st uh, I started grooming a friend of mine who shot rap videos and stuff like that. And I, I started, you know, uh, studying with him uh, on how to uh, to edit film and things of that nature. So I went and purchased me a bunch of high high end cameras. And and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give it a run with the booking, uh, booking actors, sending the scripts out uh, and people would really enjoyed it. Shout out Mimi Agency for getting Lamar Odom uh, in there, you know, and just representing the way they do. Right. I, she's amazing. I love to. Uh, okay. So wait, so what don't you do? Um, I almost cussed. <laughs> <laughs> Mess around. <laughs> okay. Like, no, you do a little no. bit of everything, literally. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I tried everything, you know, uh, in Jacksonville, it was just like a testing site for me. You know, I, was, I had a comedy club. I had some restaurants. I had a regular club. Um, and I would get great at them things and just sell them off. You know, I just wanted to see if I can do it. And and I just like pushing myself to do, you know, do different things. And right now I'm working on um, a series, my own family, like reality show. It's called Mincy, The Mincy Family Plan for Keeps. That'll be dropping soon. We, we finished like episode three. Uh, so far, so you know, we want to put at least eight episodes out there and see how the people take to it and see what happens. Wow! Every time I'm like, all right, so I mean, this is what he does. It's like, no, 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 but this is what's coming next. <laughs> 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 That's so amazing. I love that so much. That's when you, when someone is persistent and dedicated, and they have a vision. You're like the perfect example of what it takes and what you can accomplish if you mm. set your mind to it and you stay dedicated and focused. That's right. That's right. And uh, we we also pushing comfy cush clothing. Me and my wife. Shout out to my wife, my beautiful wife. Okay. Shout out to her. I s see. And the list is just keep, they keep on coming. I'm telling you. <laughs> I yeah. Like I mean, like I say, we try everything because you know and. And the key to it, y'all, is don't overbear yourself. Let you know, let yeah. things let go with the flow. Like I, I have a what people think that I'm in a million places, but no, I'm at home training my kids. You know, uh, uh, hanging out with them, doing typical stuff, and then when they're at school, that's why I get a lot of business done. Right. And, and then and then I can hone right back into my father mm -hmm. uh, side of things, and 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 then record it and make it real and raw. And I think you know, I think. I think that's going to be amazing for people because it's going to be like real, nothing scripted, all real, raw, you know, family emotions and things of that nature, but portrayed in a good light. You know, I think, right. uh, I think, uh, I think it's not enough shows like that. You'll get enough suspense by watching the games and watching them 
you know, play against different teams and fight for their survival mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Yeah. But nothing messy or ratchet or nothing like that. Yeah, well, I, I can't really see you putting something out like that with the way that your personality <laughs> is. Um, that's so beautiful, though, that you're keeping everything in the family. It's You're setting such a great example for your kids. Let's talk about this clothing line. Mm-hmm. So what exactly do you guys have? I see T-shirts. So for oh, a pair, yeah. what do you offer? Uh, t- t-shirts, sweaters, uh, you know, sweatsuits, tracksuits, hats, a lot of nice things. Uh, uh, we, we, we're doing really well. You know, we had a big litigation with a billion dollar company. I can't mention their names due to, yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah. but, but, but we, 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 you know, we broke even out the deal and we're able to continue to produce and keep going. And I think that was just amazing for us to survive that type of hit, mm-hmm. um, and still be sustainable and comfortable. So, you know, God is good. Uh, just keep your faith alive and just keep pushing and don't be afraid to do whatever you feel like you can do. If you can, if you feel like you can do it, you can do it. Hence the comfy clothing, right? Comfy Kush clothing. Oh, comfy Kush clothing. Mm-hmm. Oh, cute. Okay. I didn't see all that part. I love that. Oh, I love how it's spelled. So everybody mm-hmm. that's listening, it's spelled K-U-M-F-E-E and clothing mm-hmm. is spelled with a K. That's mm-hmm. so dope. I was hoping you were going to say sweatsuits because I'm a big fan of sweatsuits. I like live in sweatsuits all the time. <laughs> we'll, make so sure, we'll make sure we get you some. Yeah, I was going to say, I got to go check that out today. I, so, okay, out of everything you have going on, because like you said, everybody thinks you're in a million places, but you're technically not. Mm-hmm. How do you make your day-to-day work and still have that balance with your family, for your wife? and still have a little bit of time for you. I mean, just prioritizing, you know, you got 24 hours in a day. And if you, if you use them wisely, you'll have time for everything you're trying to accomplish. Um, get up early, you know, um, get things out the way early. And then when things are out the way, you could just completely focus on your children. And then like, if I got a studio session at night, if we got to do some editing, I can do that from, you know, the time there, uh, sleep, until you know 12 you know 12 a night and take a shower repeat recycle you know and uh, keep the balance you know and then mm-hmm. it'll be days where i don't work or do anything and that, that's why i focus on uh, the family and the life you know just hanging out you know and then you know a day or two for me you know so it it all works out so when people say certain things it's really all about the excuse rather than being proactive and putting action behind their their intentions absolutely i mean uh if it's a wall knock it down like you don't yeah. make excuses just go just go take the first leaf of faith and see what happens you know you never know what will happen if you don't try and and that's i think well i think a, lot, a big part of that too is is fear that people have um of maybe trying to do something and not succeeding. I did want to go back though, now that we're kind of talking about that to when you shot the movie. So I were, I've worked in film as well. Um, Mm -hmm. and I've, I've worked on some really incredible productions. I know what goes into this and, Mm -hmm. uh, what goes into shooting a movie in two weeks, which is insane. Uh, Mm -hmm. the long days, very long days. Very. Yep. a, A lot of no sleep. Um, but for you, since you decided to wear so many hats, was that part, did you just want to learn the process? Did you want to experience it for yourself so that you understood what goes into it? Or, cause it seems like you like a challenge. Like you, you love the knowledge. You like being able to grow. It's kind of like, let me just see how I can put this together. Let me see if it can turn out the way I, I think it will. Well, well, it was, it was, <laughs> It it was tough, but the the key to it was preparation. You know, I when I look at a script, like I look at it like a comic book. Like as a kid, I would draw little comic books. When I was in fifth, sixth grade, I loved drawing comic books and things of that nature. So when I was able to actually draw it with my, you know what I mean, draw my vision and make it come to life, I was like, I got this. I got it. Okay, all right. Now I just have to make real life humans do what these cartoons doing. And say what this, you know, say what this script says. And yeah. I want them to say it from their point of view. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it will make it more raw and authentic, you know. Right, and, right. Uh, and that's what ended up happening. Like everybody, 
I mean, some of these were first time actors. Like it was just it was random people that I knew their personality would fit mm-hmm. with with the script. So it made it a lot easier, supposed to someone have 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 to learn uh the script for months before, you know. Uh and I think that's what made it raw. <laughs> you know I'm just, so you you <laughs> I'm just trying to get, make sure I understand this right. So you write the movie, mm-hmm. then you play a full hand in like four different roles as far as putting the movie together. Yes. And then because that's not enough, you decide you want to put in some people that have zero acting experience and still be able to push out what you got done. Yes, that's pretty much what happened. Man, <laughs> if I could high five you right now, that is insane. Listen. For people listening in right now, this is not normal. It doesn't work like this. You normally don't get right. people with no experience and get a turnout like that That's at right. all. At all. That's right. So I can't commend you enough. That's incredible. You ever just look at yourself in the mirror and pat yourself on the back and be like, yeah, I did that. You know what? Sometimes <laughs> I do, and it feels so so good to do it sometimes. I'm always the humble one. I'm always talking yeah. about everybody around me, you know, and things of that nature, but... You're right. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta do that just to you know feel like uh, you're moving uh, and you're in motion. Um, you give yourself yeah, that love back. What? Like you did that? That I would have never thought. Yes, and you know what the key to it was? The key to it was just putting the really good actors around, like per scene. Just have if you got one really good one, like Mark John Jeffries. This losing Isaiah here. You know he's. He as good as they get, you know, mm. to some, you know, um, but you know, everybody fed off him, you know, um, right. and then, uh, my boy LeVar Tatum drew, like people fed off him. Like they was feeding off the key actors and doing a really good job of that. So it made even people that didn't act. I literally had to talk these lines and do it myself literally first. And to give them an idea of how to, you know, go forward with it. And they did a great job. Like, I mean, some things are just meant to happen. That's weird. Clearly. Because but... Cle- it don't yeah. happen like this. Okay. Right. Even people with experience don't get things done like that. That's so fact. that is so incredible. People, you have to go watch this movie. The suspense the action, the storyline, it's a must-see. You have to check it out. 13th and Pine, available on Tubi right now, Mm -hmm. like yesterday, like now. So they Mm -hmm. have to go check it out. If they wanted to come and keep up with you, where can they go to support you? I mean, obviously, you have so many projects. I'm assuming you have Mm -hmm. to have a central landing spot for everything. Yes. um, Well, we're working on getting my uh, at Mr. Mintz 92 page back to Instagram because that was my verified page with 300 uh, K plus followers. But I don't know out of, out of the blue, it disappeared. So I moved on to my business page and that's at Mr. Mintz productions Inc. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it, it should have uh, 80 K followers to let you know that that's uh, authentically me. And you could find me at Jeremy Mincy on uh, Facebook on my official page and uh, Mintz pro on Facebook. So, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we ain't hard to find. You can check out our YouTube at Mr. Mitch Productions Inc. It'll keep you uh, in the loop with what we have coming and what's going on. And yeah, that's how you can find me. So exciting. And you got to make sure you go get a sweatsuit too, because they look super that's right. dope and super comfortable. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you today, Jeremy. I cannot wait to see what you come up with in 2023. If this is what you've done so far. I already know it's going to be fireworks next year. So I can't wait to hopefully catch up with you again and hear all about what what new things you have in the pipeline, because I'm sure you're going to have a nice handful of things going on next year. That's right. That's right, man. Missy family plan for keeps. Get, be on the lookout for it. It's going to be dope. And that'll be available when you think towards the spring? Um, towards the spring. Towards the spring. Uh, yep. Towards the spring. Yep. Love it. So you guys know mm-hmm. you have to go follow him so you can stay up to date with the, all that information for new releases and all the other amazing projects he has going on. It's it's really been such a pleasure. And we're going to take a quick break, everybody, but we'll be right back. Make sure you don't go anywhere. You're listening to The Abby Night Show.